This video was suggested by Madhav, so thank you very much for that. This tutorial I'll be explaining the code rather than writing it. What I recommend is that you download this project up on GitHub, look over it and learn from it. So what this project does is if you can go to a new game, in fact if we go back you'll notice that this is grayed out, we can't click on it. So if I go to a new game I can say let's go level 2, let's change this to say 10, this 1 and then 5. If I press Control S I know it's saved, you can see can save there. If I close this down, open up again, you can see continue and sure enough 10, 1, 5 and we're on level 2. So it's going to save our level we're on and our player data. Now obviously I'm using buttons but you could you could change this if the player hits something then you reduce the player's health and then you can load it back later. So let's get into it. I won't be focusing on the actual interface, it'll just be the saved load so I will skip over a lot of this because you'll have a different game anyway so let's get to it. The main part of the load and save is actually an auto load. An auto load is something that is saved and constantly active in your project. Mine's called Game Manager and you can see it's just a normal node. I've got some level detail stuff here. Once again I'm not going over this, this, is, this will just change some values but we want to focus on this save aspect so I'm just going to hide that for now. So if you started in your game, if you made a game manager or you might already have one, then once you've saved it, you'll notice in the project settings, if you go to your auto load, there it is. Make sure if it isn't there, obviously you want to load it in, but I'm not going to do that because mine's already loaded and make sure that singleton's turned on. So in the code of game manager, you can see I've got the variables here that we'll be dealing with. We've got our level, health, speed and strength. Our game data, now this is going to be updated at all times and it's a dictionary obviously. So every time we change our level, this will be updated. If we receive damage or if our strength increases, this will be updated. And that updated scripts here. As you can see, it's got the game data, which is up here. And we're just going to feed in the player data. And then this is an array underneath it. So this is the values related to player data. And then we've got level data. Now you could have another one here called checkpoint. And make sure you put checkpoint at the top. Now obviously in this tutorial I won't be doing that but I'll just leave it because you can have values here that you'll never have to use but it won't impact you unless you start to call values that don't exist and obviously you'll get an error then. You'll notice as soon as the game starts it's got in already so we're going to do an update and obviously these are going to be the default values so when you start a new game this is the values you'll have. Obviously if you click continue then it will update the values to the saved file. Do save is going to save our values, so we're going to define a new file. We're then going to say, at this path, we are going to write, and then we're going to get the dictionary, and we're going to write, the we're going to store the line to JSON. So we're saving it as a JSON file, and this way, the dictionary is formatted in a JSON format. We're finished with it, so we're going to close it. Now, do load is almost like the same, but what you should do here is a file check if the file exists. We do that on the continue button. So this can only be accessed if this file actually exists. And I'll show you that later on the continue button. So we're going to open this file and of course we're going to read it in. And we're going to say our dictionary is now going to get the file as text and it's going to pass that JSON file into a dictionary format and then we're going to close it. So you can imagine save file is going to get your dictionary and save it as a JSON. Do load is going to get your JSON and load it up as a dictionary. Now you can see in physics process, I'm always going to be checking for the save key and the print key. And to do that, you would want to go to your project settings, your input map, and right at the bottom you can see that my save key is control S and my print key is P. Now you'll notice that I've got three levels here and they all start with level. So obviously I'm going to get the tree, get our current scene, check the name, and does the name begin with level? Yes it does, then we can save, so we'll do the do save else of course we can't save so it won't do anything and we're just going to do this just for the developer purposes and lastly show data and hide data it's just going to hide this and show this and also it's going to update our label to our current values now you can see these buttons each one of them i've got the exact same script on and as you can see i've got health and is it up and this one obviously isn't so it's not and as you can see as we go through them, I've just updated the export. So if we look at that, you can just see quickly. Now this should be quite straightforward, so I won't, I won't go over it. But what is really important is that once we do change these values, we need to update them and then we show date them. So what that's going to do is it's going to update our dictionary and it will also show the updated values to the user. You'll notice that this continue button is kind of grayed out. And one way this differs is I have changed 
the script on here from these two buttons. So if we look at that continue button, we've got some UI stuff. I'll quickly go over that just to explain it. So we're going to check, hey, does this file exist? If it doesn't, it means this button can be clicked. And what we'll do is call this function and that changes everything to white. And as you see, it changes stuff to white. Else, if that file doesn't exist in the course, we don't want to be able to click this button. So can click is never going to be true. It's going to stay false and the button will stay gray. And these signals are, if the mouse enters it, I want it to gain focus. But if we press it, this is where it's quite important. We're going to check that, hey, can this button can be clicked? Yes, it can. Then we go back to our game manager, do load. If I click this, you can see we're going to get the file that is in our saved directory and we're going to update our data. Let's go back. Now our game data is updated. We're going to get the level data. We're going to load it into this variable. And as you see, we need to update our game manager dot level. So to visualize it a bit better, we'll go to the game manager script, go to here. And as you can see, we've got the level data here and this is level. We're going to get the player data and it's just like the level, but this has got a little bit more values in it. And as you can see, we're updating the game manager, play health, play speed, player strength. And we just make sure that they're updated from the actual save file. Yeah. Once that's complete, what should be here is game manager update data. And this just makes sure that our game data is updated now that we've just loaded in the information. Once that's done, we're going to show the data to the user. We want to change our scene to the level we saved last at. And in get tree, you can see that we load our level number here. We attach it to level and this will make sure that we load where we last saved. To go one further, you could put in the checkpoint bit after this, but I've not included that in this tutorial. So that's pretty much it, but I can show you what happens in the directory. If I open this, You'll notice that we've got a file in here. We could actually change some values and it would be loaded as such. So let's do that. I'll change this to six. Let's go crazy. Let's go 50 and then let's say three. If I save this now, I can load this back up. You'll notice that the continue button is enabled because it's found the file. So I press this, it loads it up. And as you can see, we've got six, 36 and 56. And they match the values here. So you can see if I were to remove this data, if I now press play, we can't continue. There's no file there anymore. So we're going to start a new game. So no matter where you are inside the level, as long as you're in a level, you can save. If you're outside the level, you can't save just to avoid some errors. So let's go to level two and let's go crazy and say, if I press control S, Go back, continue, and as you can see, it's loaded up. Now we could go to the directory and then we could change these files. Now you might see an issue here where the player decides just to cheat and it goes to level 20. So one way around this, you want to encrypt these files. Ideally though, what you want to do is save to JSON and encrypt them and then decrypt them and save back to a dictionary. So that concludes the end of the tutorial. Once again, this might be hard to follow through, especially for beginners. And that's why I recommend downloading this project. As I said before, the link will be in the description and go over it fully. It's one of those things that's really worth learning, dictionaries and arrays and how you can mix them together and save them to JSON. It's a bit of a lifesaver and it's really easy to extend this. So thanks for stopping by. And if you prefer this type of video, let me know. If not, of course, let me know again and I'll see you in the next one.